pastors. And one of the things, and, and uh, Boy Scout motto, be prepared. And one of the ways to be prepared is with a go bag. So figured uh, with hurricane season here that it uh, might be a good time to start talking about that. Uh, so tonight we're going to talk about what is a go bag, what is the mission, how long is the mission, what should go in the go bag, adapting a go bag for amateur radio, and we're also going to go into some of the different types of bags. So what is a go bag? <laughs> it's a nail, and uh, it's a bag packed with survival supplies and kept ready for use in case of an emergency that requires rapid evacuation. Other names, it could be called a bug out bag. So uh, that was according to Miriam Webster. So um, what's the mission? And kind of deviating from Miriam Webster for, for a moment, I mean, when you, when, when you want something, I think of a go bag as something that you've got at the ready that you can just grab at a moment's notice. Uh, to accomplish what your mission is. You know, your, your mission could be to support amateur radio, it could be photography, it could be purely survival, uh, hunting, fishing, drones, cruise excursions, many, many more. And I actually thought of another use, which I'll demonstrate here in a little while. Uh, does anybody have any other ideas that they might find to go back useful? Medical kits. Yeah, medical kits. So. Um, Tennessee Section Strike Team, this is just a little side note here. We had a meeting last Friday night that the, the Tennessee Section did with Aries, and it was prior to Hurricane Barrel, we were discussing forming a strike team in response for the hurricane. And um, so just wanted you to know, we have been talking about that. They didn't see any need for help outside of the local areas that were affected. Uh, at this time, uh, but they are trying to put together something a little more formal, get some memorandums of understanding with other sections like Louisiana and Arkansas uh, so that we would be able to deploy more quickly. So, um, you know, I will provide more information about that as it becomes available. What is the TN section? That's Tennessee I mean, for ARRL. What is the section of what? It's like, like, Arkansas is a section. Uh, Louisiana. Some states are larger and they're broken up into m multiple sections, like Western California or, you know. Um, but but there, it's it's geographic set, region. Right, oh. geographic region. Okay. Well, I think what it, it's for areas. That's why I think that's right. what he's asking. So, yeah. So, uh, but like I said, there's no expected deployment for barrel, but just wanted to throw that in there as a side note. Uh, so how long is the mission? 24 hours, 72 hours, one week? Is it indefinite? Uh, Billy, I think you've probably been on some indefinite ones. 40, no, it's uh, 90, 102 days. 102 days was his longest deployment. Um, I know with the Red Cross, they usually deploy for about on two week intervals. So these are things that you got to formulate in your mind when you're trying to assemble a go bag. So what should be in the go bag? Um, this is from ready.gov. Now this is a very basic one. This isn't really ham radio related, uh, but it's more emergency related. Water, one gallon per person per day. Food, battery powered or hand crank radio and a NOAA weather radio with tone alert. Flashlight, first aid kit, extra batteries, a whistle, a dust mask, plastic sheeting, scissors, and duct tape, and that's not to dispose of bodies that you, uh, never mind. <laughs> Moist towelettes, garbage bags, and plastic ties, again, not for disposal of bodies. Uh, wrench or pliers, a manual can opener, local lamps, and a cell phone with chargers and cords. And again, that's at ready.gov. Uh, so adapting, taking Go back up here a second. Taking this and then putting it together for adapting it to amateur radio. Some questions, you know, are you going to do UHF, VHF? You're going to want a HT or mobile, some extra batteries, an antenna, and a misspelled programming, <laughs> but a programming method. 
Um, that's why in Aries, and I don't mean to keep talking about Aries, but one of the task book uh, uh, sections is how to program a repeater from the keypad of Urania. Might not have a computer, might not have the cable with you when you have to rush out as quickly as possible. So uh, that's why it's a, a very useful skill. Also, it's nifty accessories. I don't know if anybody uses their products. They, they sell aftermarket manuals, but they also sell a little fold-up card you can keep in your wallet that tells you all the various menu functions of your radio. If you're doing HF, how much wattage are you going to need? What are you going to use for a power source? Antenna. Are you going to need to do digital communications like Windlink, FL Digi, or DRATS? Windlink was heavily, heavily used post-Katrina. Uh, and it was used in uh, after Maria uh, for Puerto Rico. So uh, it's a very, very useful method, but it's also going to require you to pack extra stuff if, if that's a method you want to use. All right, so we'll run through this real quick. And I printed off a bunch of these and have them on the table over here. Uh, but it's a little checklist of anything you might want in your go bag, uh, which is a two meter dual band handheld radio and a speaker mic. This is just for VHF, UHF. Or a uh, two meter dual band mobile radio, uh, two meter dual band magnetic mount antenna or a base antenna with support, earphone or headset, RF and audio connectors and adapters, extra coax cables, an alkaline battery pack for the handheld radio. Uh, anyone that's done Joe's tech class, I mean, he shows demonstrations of the little AA battery pack that I think was on HT, very useful. A toolkit with multimeter and gas or DC soldering iron, along with solder. What good's a soldering iron if you don't have any solder? Uh, electrical and duct tape, power supplies, Extension cords, plug strips. Uh, deep cycler gel cell battery and battery chargers, SWR meter, standard power connectors and adapters, alkaline and rechargeable batteries, flashlights with spare batteries and a bulb, and your Aries ID card if you have one, driver's license or other relevant IDs. Uh, one thing that I do, and, I, and I'm not trying to tell everybody what to do, but uh, I actually take pictures of my IDs and have a special folder on my phone with you know, like my insurance cards, everything, um, so that I've got it with me at all times. Another thing to think about is contact information. If you're out of area, there's no cell service and whatnot, you have a printout of phone numbers. Yeah. My mom's number is listed as mom. I don't know what her number is. I'm ashamed to say. I just hit mom on my phone and I call her. So uh, my wife gets upset with me when I don't remember her number. But same thing. So, so make sure you print that stuff out. Put it in a sheet protector. Stick it in your glove box or you know wherever so that uh, in an emergency uh, you can have that information. Can I touch on something? Sure. Try to keep your batteries. You talk about alkaline batteries. It's best if you try to keep them all one size. So if you're using AA batteries in your radios, trying to get flashlights that use AA batteries, it's hard to get headlight headlamp with AA batteries. But it, it just cuts down on uh, having to not have to have a variety. variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent advice. Everybody understand that? Okay. Yeah. Another tip with the batteries is to use a Ziploc bag to put them in. Because if you leave that radio very long, you get the corrosion and you got problems. Right. Okay. So, very, very good tips. So, so if we're going to do HF, you're obviously going to need an HF radio, tuner, antennas and supports, and feed lines. And then under operating supplies, paper and pencil, sharpener, uh, ICS 13 forms, radiogram forms messaging forms, which both of those are a type of messaging form. A logbook, might not have a computer to do your logging, so uh, just a simple notebook like what Joe showed will work wonders. Uh, phone list contact information, that was what I was touching on uh, just a moment ago. 
If you're going to do WinLink or any type of digital, you're going to need a laptop computer. Um, there are some ways of doing, um, like with a tablet or even a phone on some modes, um, but make sure that you've got you know, the necessary interface uh, that you need uh, for what, whatever method you're going to do that with. Uh, patch cords, packet modem and or sound card mode interface, and other gear for specialized modes. So, like a signal link, for example. Personal needs, appropriate clothing for the season, foul weather gear, food and water for 24 hours, unless you're going on a 72 hour, uh, toilet kit, including toilet paper, shelter, uh, depends on whether you're deploying to an area where um, they're gonna provide lodging or not. I know uh, when I did the, uh, the EC 101 class, I interviewed a gentleman that had gone on deployment and he actually, whenever he would deploy, he had a camper, so he didn't need to worry about a tent. And um, he did say one of the things that he found uh, to be a problem was that he could not get fuel for his generator in the affected area that he was, that, that just because roads were impassable and stuff like that. So once his generator ran out, uh, he ran into some issues there for a little while. Portable stove, mess kit and cleaning supplies, waterproof matches, and first aid kit and pain reliever. Let me touch on something. Sure. The box, the case box that MREs come in, the cardboard is waterproof. So they make really good sleeping pads. Cool. <laughs> so MREs, the box that the case of them comes in is waterproof. So lay it on the ground. You're not going to get moisture coming up into your sleeping bag or whatever. So. Okay, uh, throat lozenges, um, prescription meds, eyeglasses, copy of your prescriptions if able, spare eyeglasses, money, change for tolls and vending machines, and an alarm clock, portable wind-up or battery type, and uh, as mentioned, make sure it uses the same kind of batteries that uh, you're already using. So that's not my back. <laughs> Different things that you can use to make your go kit. Uh, regular backpacks that you get at Sports Authority or, or wherever, uh, those can work. I like the Molly backpacks. Um, and if, if, you, if you're not familiar with Molly, it's an attachment system that allows you to add extra pouches and, and gear to your bag. Uh, duffel bags, you can even use a five gallon bucket. Plastic totes for uh, for a lot of things, or a trailer or RV, you know, it just depends on how big you want to get with this. So, all right, so time for a little show and tell. Uh, before we get into that, does anybody have any questions? So, I brought a, a couple of different bags here. And uh, again, these are both mo what, what you would call Molly bags. This is my race car bag. <laughs> I've got a headset here and an HT, and I tune into the race cars. Um, but the main feature of these are these straps or these these loops, and your pouches feed through these loops, and they actually weave in there, and then you snap it. It makes a very solid attachment system for your pouches. And then, you know, I've been known to like slide a flashlight, like a pen light in there, things like that. I also like them because they usually have Velcro on them. And on Amazon, you can get what they call name tapes. So you can get your name and your call sign. Looks professionally done for not a lot of money. So, so that's that bag. But then the one that I have the bulk of my stuff in is this one. And like one of the things I have in here uh, that wasn't on the list, this is called a life straw. Anybody heard of these? Yeah. yeah. So you can literally stick these in a body of water and start drinking. It's a filter. And I think this one's good for up to 40,000 gallons. And I have a ton of pockets here, so. This was one of the funny things. This is an old cell phone. It's a Samsung S6. I keep it in here because I've got um, uh, 
uh, FL message on here and some other applications for ham radio that even though it doesn't have service, I can still use it with my radio gear. And then I was talking about these pouches that you can put on. Yeah, this one over here is for water bottles. Got another one here for sunglasses. Let's see what's in this one. This has too many pouches. I can't remember where everything is. Protein bars. So here's my food. This little pouch here, I keep spare HT antennas in. Just seemed like the perfect size for it. And then, um, Pringle. Pringles. Yeah. But on Amazon, they sell these replacement lids for these that keeps them fresh indefinitely. You see this lid that's inset here? Here. Check it out. Those were three years old. <laughs> That was a fit, by the way. They don't really sell those lids. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's a slinky antenna. Yeah. So let's see what else I got in here. This. Want to charge your phone? Solar panel. There's three letters. It's called ABC. And I don't mean airway breathing and circulation for EMS. It's always be charging. Yep. Good advice. Good advice. But this is a simple solar panel. It's got a USB port on the back, so you can be keeping your phone topped off or whatever you want. You know, if you've got direct path to sunlight. Uh, how many how many batteries can you hook up to that? One. Yeah, this one's really just for one. It's uh, it's like a three amp, I believe, output. But they make a slightly larger one that trifolds like that, uh, that does the uh, the higher output. Like uh, I can't remember what the wattage was. I, well, I think it was about ninety watts. That one's like thirty. You have a compass in there. Do what? You have a compass in there. I might have, <laughs> I should have, but Advil. Allergy relief, Benadryl. A death, I cannot recommend this highly enough, especially if you've ever had any kind of allergic reaction to anything. Baby powder. So you get the idea, uh, just a, a little bit of everything. Got some radio pouches? Stuff. Yes, yes, actually, right here. Are they the radio pouches or are they the 556 five, magazine pouches? No, I do have some 556 five, magazine pouches at actually, home. But they work actually a little better. You can put a bigger radio in. I would agree wholeheartedly. Now, this is a little gadget that I like, and um, I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I had a chance to use it, but uh, it's an anemometer portable and it does temperature as well so if you're out doing skywarn you want to get actual wind speed measurements there you go when you hear it go whoa <laughs> <laughs> so um, back to the food thing don't put anything perishable in your bag like chicken because this is what happens to it <laughs> so um, yeah that's uh, uh, this bag doesn't, but this bag does. This bag actually has a space for a hydration pouch, so you can carry a couple extra liters of water uh, with the tube that comes over the strap and up there. Um, I don't really, I'm kind of partial to 511 Tactical, but I know they're pricey, but I have noticed that some of the cheaper bags, you start to, if you get a lot of weight on them, They'll start. You'll start seeing little tears where the straps meet the body of the bag, things like that. They've so. got a heavy-duty sewing kit in there too, right? Um, <laughs> maybe I do have a roll-up jig pole. 
I've got a fishing kit. But yeah, this is a roll up J pole for an HT. And then this. This is paracord and it's wrapped around a little thing that's got fishing hooks in it so that I guess you can go fishing if you're good with paracord. If the fish don't see the paracord. So that's all I've got right now. Uh, anybody else bring a bag to show off or show and tell? I didn't bring a bag. <laughs> yeah, and that's the other thing. It doesn't need to be. It doesn't have to be a bag. It can be a tote. It can be a toolbox. It can be anything. Just something that you keep your stuff in in case you need to deploy. So this is Joe's. It's not a bag. It's just a spot to go get all my stuff. Mm -hmm. And this isn't really, I wouldn't even really consider this more of a go bag. This is more of a support bag. Because it's got all my spare antenna parts and adapters and tools and tape. And it's more of a, but it would support my HT and my, it would support my mobile rig because I could de-take it out. I could take it out of my car. And I do keep a mag mount in the car that's not on the car. So, I mean, this is really just, okay, if I'm going somewhere and I need to support myself, then I go get my kit and throw the battery on top of it and you, know, you mentioned the nifty guides yeah that yeah those are great band plan and common frequencies like the maritime and fldg all the frequencies are common there and i found an old copy of the yeah uh, uh, night fog right drawing blank and have that with me just so that because this is really handy just to know what yeah. you might need but the challenge with that is, to your point, you gotta, if you're in a, in a different region, you got to be able to program them all. Right. Because you can't have them all programmed in your radio. Exactly. Sure and that's got other services in yeah, there besides can. just <laughs> the radio. You can. And then, you know, in, in here is a charger. And you know, just, for me, yeah. it's just it's not a bag yet. It had graduated right. that. Yep. So, um, does anybody have any questions, comments? And I know I left out a ton of stuff. Always um, carry. Carried right in the rain, pad, where you got five, you know, pad don't fit in my cargo pocket, the pen, the pen, right in the rain pen. Now the gel, they're good till they're dry. I mean, the good after they dry, but they don't write so good in the Right, pen. right. And I write things thought is the way I title it. There's a lot of stuff in that pad for the whole my whole event, but I, I'm always upgrading my my deployment package right because things change technology Absolutely. changes and different things and so i've got 25 years worth of those wow <laughs> <laughs> and you see things go back you know they go circle full circle and you know that kind of stuff because you can't kitchen sink it you can't take everything glued in kitchen sink it. you can't do it absolutely and so great advice and it does change i mean even even some of the stuff that we put up here yeah just, just because of, of what, you know, carrying the appropriate clothing. You're not going to carry shorts to Maine in the middle of January. So, you're going to be pretty cold <laughs> if you do that. So, some, of, some of mine. <laughs> socks. Socks. <laughs> Take care of your feet. Anybody else? All right. Well, that's all I have on that topic. Yeah. Um, I'm going to throw another shameless plug out there. The signal report, their QR codes on your tables, they're by the doors. Um, that really helps us understand what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see more of. Um, if uh, you can participate in field day, just let us know because those help us out um, because we can't read minds. So that's a, a way we've tried to figure out how to help you communicate with us back. You can stay completely anonymous, uh, or you can, you can tell us who you are. It's up to you. Um, I don't have anything else other than the shameless plug for the signal report. At this time, I think we're done, and I would entertain a motion. Make motion to adjourn. Please. And make the motion to adjourn, and seconded by who is the second? Who wants to take the second? All right, we got a second over there right here. All right, all in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries. Thank you so much.